Phew, finally escaped this map. Man, it's been a while since I've played it with all the release of all these new maps. <laughs> ah! Ugh! Wait, what? Hi, I'm Crazy Blocks. No! Hello Internet! Welcome to Flood Theory, the show that's not afraid to use real life science to explain a silly Roblox game. Now without wasting any time, let's jump right into this theory. In the last episode, we talked about the destruction of Flood Escape and how Crazy Blocks left the Flood Escape facility abandoned, leading to its decay and the eventual eruption of the volcano beneath the facility. The guide was left forgotten in the ruins. Now on the Dark Side facility. In November of 2017, a map called Darkside Facility was released to Flood Escape 2, and the community exploded. At the time of its release, it was Flood Escape 2's hardest map, with lava rising faster than any map before, and exclusive features such as the blinking walls that sync with the music, and the screen shaking. And these features made it stand out against any other map. Darkside Facility is one of the most iconic maps in Flood Escape 2, and oh boy does it have lore. In fact, it's one of the most important maps to Flood Escape 2's lore. So before I get into the series, let's go over what we already know. It's a commonly known fact that Darkside Facility actually has a prequel, Darkside Forest. Some people have theorized that Darkside Forest actually is the sequel to Darkside Facility, but that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, look at where the maps begin and end. It's clear that Darkside Forest is the prequel to Darkside Facility. As we can see, at the end of Darkside Forest, there is a building with a lift that crashes down into Darkside Facility, as confirmed by Crazy Blocks in a tweet from 2017. Now you may be asking yourself, who the heck built this place? Who would be crazy enough to build a deep hidden facility inside a polluted forest? In both maps, there's not really a lot of evidence to who created this facility. Enter No Light. For those who don't know, No Light is the cancelled crazy map that was meant to be the sequel to Darkside Facility, which was going to complete the Darkside trilogy, but ultimately it was postponed and cancelled shortly thereafter. Even though the map was cancelled, it's still canon to Flood Escape's lore, and we have a collection of screenshots to scavenge for some lore! In one of the rooms, we can see a screen with the abandoned Flood Escape ruins we're also familiar with, but here comes the big piece of evidence. In this picture, we can see a familiar looking pair of wings and hat. That's right, it turns out Crazy Blocks is actually the creator of Darkside Facility. In Darkside Forest soundtrack, there's some odd sounding bites at the beginning of the song, which upon closer inspection end up being Morse code. The Morse code spells out SOS location, DSF. So obviously, this forest holds a dangerous secret, but that leaves more questions. What is the purpose of Darkside Facility? Why did Crazy Blocks abandon Flood Escape? Why did he build a hidden facility in this forest? Well, it's time to answer all these questions in today's theory. Today's Flood Theory! Darkside Facility is the hardest map in Flood Escape 2, but what actually is it? At first glance, it seems to be just a facility underneath a forest, but we know that it has a deeper purpose. Well, I believe that Darkside Facility is a lab of some sort, or even a facility to conduct experiments or tests. We can gather this from the name itself, Dark Sci, obviously being short for Dark Science. And where would be a perfect place to hide your shady experiments? Well, in a bunker hidden in the depths of the earth, stretching out to the liquid magma of the earth. We can gather this from the shaking of the facility due to tectonic movements. And on top of this impenetrable fortress is a large polluted forest that no one would dare explore. Dark Side Forest. But first, let's look at why the facility is seemingly shaking in-game. In a document published by the U.S. Department of Energy in 1978, our firms from the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, which I mentioned in our last episode, were sent out around the globe to try and find the risk of having underground nuclear waste repositories, which is our real-life stand-in for Dark Side Facility. These geologists were sent out to research and find out how much tectonic activities would affect these facilities deep underground. They were sent out to mines, existing facilities, and underground structures to report on their findings. Now get this. The damage from the tectonic plate movements was actually higher the further up they were. 
and the deeper they were, the less damage was done. Experience shows that tunnels more stable than structures located on the surface. Critical frequencies are lower for, for large underground chambers than tunnels because of the increased size in the underground chambers. The USGS reported in the lessons and conclusions of the Alaskan earthquake of 1964 that there's no significant damage reported to underground facilities. The reports of non-damage from this earthquake are important because this earthquake was one of the largest to occur, with a 9.2 on the Richter scale. So in Flood Escape 2, when we're in Darkside Facility, since it's so deep underground, it's actually keeping itself safe from collapsing in on itself. But what does this have to do with Crazy Blocks and Flood Escape as a whole? A lot of time has passed since Crazy Blocks abandoned Flood Escape. When Flood Escape was still being visited, he started the construction of a facility in a polluted forest, the Darkside Facility. Crazy Blocks had the idea of an experience to surpass Flood Escape, Flood Escape 2. He would need advancements in technology, new mechanics, a new flood OS, and what a better place to construct and develop these than within this facility. This facility laid the groundwork and conducted multiple tests for the oncoming Flood Escape 2. It is here that many pieces of Flood Escape 2 were crafted, the synthesis of acid, red acid, and poison as new liquids, as well as the creation of air bubbles was among these inventions. Crazy Blocks had large ambitions for this game. It was going to be his greatest creation. It had to be. After the success of the first game, he couldn't let everyone down. The facility was so deep underground that it reached lava, and the facility would often shake due to tectonic plate movements. However, Crazy Blocks let his ambitions get the better of him. He was consumed by this idea that Flood Escape 2 had to be his greatest creation, until, inevitably, calamity struck the facility. Perhaps it was the poison drawn from a distant forest. Perhaps it was placed there by a person looking for revenge. We'll never truly know. But a virus was created. The Dark Side Virus. The virus's complexities and effects are classified, with the only information being known as its potential lethality and placement in this facility. Crazy Blocks knew he had to shut the facility down, but he also had to escape this mechanical fortress buried beneath the surface and continue his work on Flood Escape 2. So with his research in hand, he fled the scene of his greatest failure. It's unknown if everyone was able to escape the facility safely, but Crazy Blocks knew this was his failure. Failure to save the guide, failure to contain the virus, and failure to keep control of his facility. In this failure, he fell into an obsession with the creation of Flood Escape 2, ensuring it would be his magnum opus, his last and greatest creation. Eventually, Flood Escape 2 would release to the public, containing the essence of his failures in many of the maps. Familiar ruins, beneath the ruins, dark side forest, dark side facility, all monuments to the mistakes of his past. We know that Crazy Box has always been into technology, making several technological advancements seen throughout Flood Escape 1 and 2. He even appeared to make multiple operating systems for Flood Escape, with Flood Escape 2 running on an operating system called Flood OS 2.0. Well, I think that the development of Flood Escape 2 occurred in Darkside Facility alongside his numerous experiments. We know that Flood Escape 2 was planned for a while before the destruction of Flood Escape, hence the paper that the guide finds that reads Flood Escape 2. And since all games require testing before they enter the actual creation phase, the obvious location for this testing would occur is in Darkside Facility. Now you may be wondering where this Darkside virus concept even came from. After all, where would a virus of all things be in Flood Escape's lore? Well, to answer all that, we have to visit a place that I believe holds many pieces of Flood Escape 2's lore. The shop. In the shop, there's an aura which you can buy, which, you guessed it, is called the Darkside virus. This leads us to the true nature of the virus. What led to its creation? This is where the lore becomes a little ambiguous and leads us into more speculative territory. One possible explanation is that the virus originated from a natural source. Enter Poisonous Forest. Now we all know the map Poisonous Forest in FE2, but what connection could this possibly have to Darkside Facility? Well, in the Poisonous Forest soundtrack, there's a specific Liet motif that can be heard. Listen closely. Sound familiar? It's the Darkside Liet motif, hinting that there may yet be some connecting factor between the two. 
There's not much we can actually gather about the virus, although when we explore the dark side facility in Flood Escape 2, it's entirely empty and falling apart, which leads us to believe that this virus is what led to Crazy Blocks' failure and the abandonment of the facility. When the Dark Side Virus Aura is equipped in Flood Escape 2, the player has a green, blue, and red aura glowing off of them. We can also see that the virus augments the player's vision because when we equip the aura and go into first person view, our vision is completely obstructed by these particles. Perhaps this virus originated naturally from Poisonous Valley, Forest, and Chasm, which led to them becoming dangerous environments as we see in Flood Escape 2. The virus could have polluted the terrain we have come to know as Poisonous Forest, Poisonous Valley, and Poisonous Chasm. Or, theory number two. In Poisonous Valley and Forest, there are some unexplained structures and buildings within the walls and valleys of the forest. This leads us to the second theory. Perhaps the virus was developed here in Poisonous Valley and planted in Darkside Facility to sabotage the development of Flood Escape 2 or even get rid of Crazy Blocks entirely. The virus may have been leaked and introduced to the facility by a certain blue tuxedo wearing fellow who is seeking revenge. How do I know this? Well. The guide can be found hidden within Poisonous Valley, pouring the very same virus into the water. But what could lead the guide to want to do this? Well, you'll have to stick around to my next video as I explore his possible motives, as well as many more topics about him. Both of these theories hold equal weight in terms of lore currently released to us. However, I tend to lean more towards the guide releasing the virus, and this will be the avenue that we'll be exploring in my next Flood Theory video. From all this information, we can conclude that the virus is indeed very dangerous. It caused Darkside Facility to be evacuated and eventually begin falling apart due to its abandonment. The virus also has the potential to infect humans and other organic forms of life as we can see in our beloved Poisonous Trilogy, which has been polluted by the virus. In an attempt to sabotage Crazy Blocks and the development of Flood Escape 2, the virus was introduced to Darkside Facility, which gave us the name Darkside Virus. Now it's up to us to figure out if the guide is truly behind all of this, and if so, what are his motives? Well, you'll have to find out on the next episode of Flood Theory. But hey, that's just a theory. A flood theory. Thanks for watching.